drastically reducing the land acreage in the rural areas. This in turn is limiting the various agricultural options available for the farmers. In cognizance of this fact, the World Bank through the Government of Kenya is funding community-based organizations in alternative sources of livelihood and diet that require limited space and expertise to implement. The objective of the Natural Resources Management Project is to reduce the community's over-reliance on the natural resources around them. Towards this objective, the World Bank has funded several community-based organizations to start dairy goat rearing projects as a source of meat and highly nutritious milk. The dairy goat project is gaining popularity since the cost of rearing one dairy cow is enough to raise six dairy goats, making it an ideal enterprise for farmers with small land parcels. Several groups have had their proposals approved and funded after passing through all the stages of vetting. The groups include Kibuyu Village Self-Help Group in Nyandarwa County, who are funded with a total of 883,000 shillings. Motito Dairy Goat Keepers in Kerenyaga County, who are funded with a total of 285,000 shillings and Kwemenya Dairy Farmers Field School in Nyeri County, who are funded with 670,000 shillings. Rianza Muradi Hu, Mwesi wa Kumi na Moja, Tukapatiwa Pesa na NRM. Pesa iso ni sa kununua mbusi tano na dume moja. Tunatarajia mengi kutoka kwake. Faida yake ni maziwa, ni nyama na tena manjua yake. The most preferred breeds are the Togenberg and German Alpine breeds, which are certified and supplied by the Dairy Goat Association of Kenya to ensure only high-yielding varieties are supplied to farmers. However, unlike indigenous breeds, which are left to roam free and plant for themselves, dairy goats are zero grazed, hence they require structures which will shield them from direct sunlight, wind and rainwater. The structures are constructed using locally available material, such as posts, wood and corrugated iron sheets for roofing. This ensures the structures allow in enough light and ventilation. The floor of the cages is raised and is constructed in a way that allows urine and manure drain and fall easily. This ensures cleaning is easy and the cages remain dry to prevent diseases. Troughs strategically constructed allow farmers to easily feed and water the goats. The structures are also designed to allow the goats to have space where they can exercise and get some sunlight. The diet of the goats is easily available around the farm and it consists of napier grass, coliandra, mulberry among others. Farmers are encouraged to plant the feed as hedges around the compound to act as a fence and also as a constant supply of feed. Combining the various types of feeds provides the goat with a range of nutrients important for a higher milk output. A dairy goat that is well taken care of can provide enough milk for the family and excess for sale. The milk is preferred because it is highly nutritious especially for children and recuperating patients. Another advantage compared to cows is that goats are prolific breeders, multiplying very fast with mostly twin kids being born. 
The kids are sold for a tidy sum in the local market because of their high demand for upgrading of local goods. The upgrading program involves cross-breeding of local goods which are more disease resistant with the Togenberg and German Alpine breeds in order to produce superior breeds which are disease resistant but with a higher milk output. Indeed, the success of the several goat rearing and upgrading projects is a clear indicator of how alternative sources of livelihoods can go a long way towards reducing poverty at the village level while diversifying diets. Next on corner. Last night, I came up with the most brilliant idea. You have my attention. Am I missing something here? This gym is falling apart, Uncle Jimmy. Everything has changed since Wanjala's victory. We've entered into a comfort zone. I don't think we have entered into a comfort zone. I disagree. Whatever you're selling, I'm not buying. Please do, Miss Kizu. So they come crying to you again. I said my door was open. Why can't they come to me directly? I've earned that right. Since late last year, the coronavirus COVID-19 has emerged as a serious healthcare threat. This is an infection that has gone global and no one has been spared. The government, through the Minister of Health, has put in measures to keep Kenyans safe against COVID-19, which is currently rampant around the world, with new confirmed infections and death cases daily. Such sanitization and screening of visitors at this border post and across every entry point in the country is very vital in preventing the spread of the disease in the country. I'm very happy about the screenings that are going on in Tanzania and Kenya. I think it's very proactive that you're thinking about stopping it at the border so that it, that it does not spread. It is scary that a single cough here can lead to an outbreak of epic proportions. In order to prevent that, the government has instituted measures to keep Kenyans safe. The facility has all the equipment you need from uh, handling a basic patient up to ICU set. However, you also have a role to play in preventing spread of infections. Members of the public I encourage to remain vigilant as the risk is still high. Let's maintain basic hand and respiratory hygiene. It's just our general hygiene, okay? And that now means at workplaces, we should ensure that our work surfaces are clean. Well, let's ensure that we have proper sanitation in Mikono. 
Every time na board matatu, lazima ni sanitize mikono. We have faced many severe challenges as a nation, and we have always found a way to rise above them. COVID-19 is no different, and will overcome the pandemic. Stop coronavirus. Follow all directives from the Ministry of Health. Wash your hands properly. KBC, in collaboration with the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, is broadcasting enhanced out-of-class learning on radio, television, and online. Catch the lessons every weekday on KBC Channel 1 from 2 to 4 p.m. on KBC English Service and 15 FM from 9.15 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Radio Taifa from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. KBC English Service, Radio Taifa and 15 FM are also available countrywide on the free-to-air Signet digital TV platform or log on to www.kbc.co.ke for live streaming or download the KBC online app on Google Play Store. Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, ensuring learning no matter what. On the next episode of Elena's ghost. Mommy, I swear that I tried to get away from him, but but he wouldn't stop asking me why, why I'd left him. Listen, I don't know why, but I feel as if I'm lying to Andrea. But why would you? Oh, no. Don't tell me you're spending time with Milady. You must know every homeless person around here. Yes or no? Uh, yes, 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 uh, because I've lived around here the longest. <laughs> That woman that I'm looking for hasn't been here for very long. They say she's a bit crazy. Next on. Due to my health condition, I will... I will go after the project finishes. I'm sorry. Hello? Hello? It is 28th of April, just two days uh, to the close of this month. Good morning. My name is Ben Troy Njue, and this is Channel One News Check. And for the next uh, around two hours, we'll be delving into issues, COVID. But today we are looking at uh, COVID-19 and uh, people living with disabilities. They, of course, on a normal day, they usually have a lot of challenges. But right now, the challenges have been blown up uh, with some some actually uh, being on the receiving end of uh, all those problems that come there, the ATMs, let's look at the banks, let's look at the supermarkets, how are they able to access uh, services, how are they able uh, to move from one place to another, and especially uh, now during the, the curfew that is currently uh, on the underway. Of course, some even have other underlying issues and have to seek even uh, more, more medical treatment. That we will be looking with my guest, uh, who even before we take a look at um, her national duties, uh, she's actually has done a lot to support 
uh, people living with disabilities. She has even written books on, on the same and even has a documentary to document all this. And uh, wait for it. She is a cancer uh, survivor. But just before that, uh, let's first have a look at some of the things that you should be knowing uh, regarding the COVID-19 virus. Uh, to prevent ourselves from uh, spreading the disease, we need, first of all, to wear masks whenever we are in touch with people, when we are walking out of our homes, and even when we are together, even at home, we are supposed to keep a distance of one meter from each other so that anyone who has the virus and doesn't even know is uh, not uh, passing the virus to the other. We are both protecting ourselves. The other thing we need to do is to stay at home so that we are not interacting with many other people when we have to go out either to the market or to uh, various places, especially when we are doing shopping. Uh, the other main thing is uh, that we need to wash our hands frequently using soap and running water. And this soap and running water is uh, going to help us to kill the virus when we, we wash our hands, touching every part of your hand, the fingernails and everywhere, so that you can kill the virus and the virus cannot be able to uh, move to another person. So washing hands is a key uh, intervention. Again, this is News Check. Our sign language interpreter for this morning is Lensa Odingo. And uh, before we actually uh, have a look at uh, the statistics that we have as us now, uh, let's have a look at the reporter's diary. Uh, okay, we will be relaying that as soon as it is ready, but some of the things that we are following up, of course, uh, the live coronavirus updates by the Ministry of Health, and uh, some also we are looking at is um, uh, the ESA committee uh, in Parliament, of course, more uh, or update on the coronavirus. Well, where are we as a country, as, as the latest statistics as we have uh, according to the Ministry of Health, is that we have uh, reported 365 positive uh, coronavirus uh, tests uh, after testing over 17,000 people. We have uh, 114 recoveries, which I can say uh, is quite a milestone, which represents perhaps a, a third of uh, all the uh, positive cases. And unfortunately, we have also recorded 14 deaths uh, in regard to the same. Uh, well, Last night, during news hour, we were looking at 2.99 uh, million infected uh, people in the whole world. Uh, but uh, as early this morning, that number has shot to 3 million uh, 65,176 and counting. Uh, deaths reported uh, over 200,000 200, and recoveries, as I say, keep the faith, is... 992,862, almost representing a third of that number. Of course, USA is still leading with the number of cases, with over a million cases uh, reported, and uh, over, over, over 50,000 deaths. US is leading, followed by Spain and Italy. Well, uh, it's time to welcome our guest. As I said, uh, she is... Um, she is uh, of a national appeal, and uh, her national duties uh, is a nominated uh, senator. Uh, she is a uh, Gertrude Dr. Gertrude uh, Musruve. Karibu sana mwishimiwa. Thank you very much. Yes, and um, today we are looking at um, how the, uh, the challenges that uh, people living with disabilities are facing, and especially now that uh, we have um, the COVID-19, which, of course, uh, makes things a little bit trickier. Um, yesterday, uh, the Health CS did talk about um, uh, some, some directives, including um, the hospitality industry, uh, that uh, hotels and restaurants will be allowed uh, to operate, but they have to follow uh, the uh, regulations. What is your take on that? Now, uh, 
Thank you very much. I, I, I think, uh, in my view, it is a very good uh, move that eateries have to open, but in as much as they open, mm -hmm. they, they, they need to be cautious so that uh, they're following uh, the COVID rules, they're washing their hands, they're sanitizing, they're keeping that distance. And uh, that is a good move because uh, it will help ensure that uh, the economy does not continue to slacken, especially during uh, this time. The economy is not really doing well. Yes. And uh, there's so many people at home who are supposed to be working in uh, hotels, but uh, the, the, some of them are redundant, some of yes. them are helpless, they don't know what to do, their families are looking at them, they, you know, so they, they need to be cushioned. And I think this is a good move that the government has taken mm -hmm. because it is a move in cushioning this kind of uh, business people and also uh, I want to say that uh, there are also some uh, some of these eateries where they they have taken tenders sometimes they procure even you know tenders with the government there are some yes. people also just normal Kenyans also are given uh, jobs to supply eggs to supply food to such eateries so this will be a chance for them to continue supplying because so many people at home they don't know what the future has you know holds for them so it is a good move but but there's need to be extra cautious in as much as uh, the hoteliers are doing uh, their normal operations just to ensure that uh, they're keeping safe and they're keeping also everybody else safe because uh, we are our brothers keepers and mm -hmm. we have to ensure that uh, we are taking care of each other because everybody's life matters. Indeed. And uh, uh, dear viewer, if uh, you didn't hear or didn't have a chance to watch uh, what exactly the health CS Mutahi Kagu said yesterday, I'm um, hoping my director is ready with that clip. Um, Karyuki, if you have uh, that clip on what uh, the CS, uh, health CS talked about uh, yesterday, of course, uh, some of the, uh, we can say some of the things that uh, will help, especially the industry, uh, the hospitality industry, which has been a hard hit. Of course, uh, that clip will be ready in a short while. Uh, some have argued that um, uh, opening up hotels at this moment, it's very crucial, it's a crucial moment, and uh, it might open gates to abuse. We have uh, witnessed cases of people being uh, arrested uh, of course, in, um, in, in houses, uh, in uh, closed pubs, uh, drinking, and of course, the directive of opening the restaurant also uh, will, may give rise to people abusing that when it comes to alcohol, and of course, social, uh, social distancing and alcohol, they go together. Yeah, I, uh, I think uh, the CS was very clear mm -hmm. that he was talking about eateries. Yes. And I don't think he mentioned issues to do with pubs, to, to do with drinking. Actually, and he all said that. Actually, he said that uh, the, if you have to actually have a drink, an alcoholic beverage, uh, you have to do that in the restaurant uh, or the hotel that you're having food. But at least uh, there, of course, the, uh, the other directives uh, do follow. So uh, I want to I wish, I wish uh, my director can have that clip so that yeah, it's I think ready. We, we need yes. to get the clip. Okay, let's have a look at it. To a restaurant, you must wash their hands first. They must sanitize themselves. They must have a mask. Uh, a mask. And um, uh, more, 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 more seriously is that restaurants that are going to open are going to open with people who have been tested, who are going to be covid free. So if uh, your persons have not been tested, you cannot open a restaurant. A restaurant will operate between 5 uh, and 4 p.m., not later than that, because after that, then uh, it becomes difficult to, uh, for the people to get home, in, you know, just for curfew. But at least within that period, a lot of people were not able to go for lunch, uh, places near them, can be able to do so. There are people who work in those restaurants. They can be able to do so. But of course, for them to do that, we also have uh, asked that uh, those restaurants that are going to open uh, for this purpose must limit the number of persons who are going to be in the restaurant so that they can be able to keep the social distances that we have recommended. They can be able to keep at least four people for uh, 10 square meters. The tables within the, the, the dining areas must be, spread, uh, must be spaced at least 1.5 meters apart uh, from each other, and customer sitting must also maintain uh, the social distancing uh, that is required. 
We have also said that this is not a license to start uh, opening pubs. It is not a license to start opening um, alcohol sale across the country. Uh, alcohol shall only be sold with those having meals in a normal manner in a restaurant. We have not opened bars. Uh, when we are in those restaurants, it, we will not be serve, serving buffet lunches or self-service. That is Health CS during yesterday's briefing, and um, that is what we had been talking about earlier. Uh, my question was, uh, does that give way or give room uh, for abuse? Because uh, you might find somebody, somebody we have seen uh, on, on social media somebody joking that somebody might go to us for a sausage uh, and a whole bottle of whiskey or rum or something like that. There's that possibility, yes, but uh, the CS has come out clearly mm -hmm. that uh, when it comes to opening the eateries, then the number of people even working there should be limited. Yes. The number of people also entering the eateries should be limited, mm -hmm. and uh, people should be 1.5 meters apart. Mm -hmm. So if people are 1.5 meters apart, it means that uh, not many people will be congested, mm -hmm. you know, in the eateries, and then the social distance will be maintained. So my thinking is that mm -hmm. the eateries that are going to open, if they actually follow what the CS has said, mm -hmm. ensuring that uh, people are one five meters apart the social distance is maintained the washing of hands is there <laughs> I, I don't think there would be a problem there can only be a problem when people choose you know sometimes people can just choose to flout uh, yes. regulations yes. so in such situations mm -hmm. if they flout regulations then that is when probably uh, the, the enforcement can come in mm -hmm. and even when the enforcement comes in it should be enforcement uh, that, that is no that is actually reasonable mm -hmm. because people have to psychologically in their mind know that uh, they are doing this not for the CS, not for the government, yes. not for the president, but for everybody else, because we are our brothers keepers and we are in a fight. I want to say that all of us are in a fight, because after coronavirus, we are going to say that we were in a fight, but these are the number of people who survived the fight. So mm -hmm. all of us, we must know that uh, we have a duty to ensure that uh, we survive the fight. So we can only survive the fight mm -hmm. if we really take in the regulations uh, seriously. And this is something that uh, we must take in uh, seriously. Mm -hmm. We must consider that we want to live, you know, many years. We must consider that we have a generation also that wants to live. We must consider that we have Kenyans that need to live. So we must just insist on uh, keeping the regulations for the purpose of this generation and the generation to come also. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, that is a nominated Senator uh, Dr. Gertrude Musuve. Of course, before we get into the, uh, into the discussion, uh, you have been passionate, so passionate about uh, so many things uh, or regarding people living with disability. So far, the situation, as you, you see it in the country, we have two sides. Of course, we have all of us, we are fighting this invis invincible in enemy. And uh, the government is also helping out. We are also doing our part as Kenyan citizens. Both sides, how have you seen uh, the, how the government has handled uh, the issue, and especially for people living with disability? And uh, how are Kenyans also su supporting uh, these people living with disability? A general overview. Now, uh, just a general overview. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say that uh, persons with disabilities, uh, even before coronavirus, yes. have uh, always had many challenges because most of them languish in poverty and uh, their families, you know, most of them come from poor families and the cyclic nature of poverty, you know, continues uh, in their families. Mm -hmm. And you'll you'll find that uh, even getting food has, bec has always been a problem. Mm -hmm. Getting medication has always been a problem. Mm -hmm. Getting NHIF to actually cushion these people has always been uh, a problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to say that uh, even as the corona uh, you know, comes in, mm -hmm. uh, we find that uh, their challenges have even become greater than uh, they were. Mm -hmm. And uh, since they were greater than they were, uh, I want to say that uh, Yes, the government has come up uh, with uh, mechanisms to cushion persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And I really want to commend the government. I want to commend what the president is doing with mm -hmm. regard uh, to uh, the raft of measures that is, uh, he has come up with mm -hmm. to ensure that he's cushioning uh, Kenyans. And uh, I want to say that even the amount of money that uh, has been set aside for persons with disabilities, it is a good gesture. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's need to realize that uh, when it comes to issues of disabilities, mm -hmm. there are really really many 
and the government alone may not be able to manage issues of disability. Mm -hmm. NGOs have to come in, well-wishers have to come in, and many other people have to come in in order to ensure that uh, we are taking care of uh, our persons with disabilities. And even as you are saying that uh, we need to see how to take care of uh, uh, our persons with disabilities, we have to look at the reality on the ground. Mm -hmm. What exactly is happening on the ground? Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you really go to deserving persons with disabilities you will find that so many of them are suffering even at the moment so many people uh, have no food on the table so many people sometimes uh, have no medicine like uh, we have cases of uh, you know uh, uh, you know children with uh, neurodevelopment issues mm -hmm. li like uh, you know uh, their children with autism yes down syndrome yes. and all that their parents are so frustrated Right now, they have to look for medicine for these children. They have to look for food. They do not have even uh, the money. And then the diet issue for such children is really, really uh, wanting. So you'll find that uh, parents are really confused. Do they look for money for food? Do they look for money for medicine? So I want to say that uh, even uh, in as much as the government is actually doing something to cushion uh, the vulnerable, there's need to, uh, for, for the government also, and also the team of the CS, because, uh, and I want to thank the CS for what he's doing, because he's really leading uh, this team. But there's need for the, 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 the CS uh, cargo team mm -hmm. to have an expert on mm -hmm. issues of disability on the team mm -hmm. who will actually give information that is going to help people with disabilities. I want to give an example of uh, uh, people who suffer from uh, you know down syndrome mm -hmm. uh, some people with autism and all that mm -hmm. you'll find that uh, some of these children mm -hmm. uh, you know rely on medicine mm -hmm. and right now they do not have any medicine mm -hmm. but i want yeah. to say that uh, the team of kagwe is a strong team it is a team that can mobilize resources mm -hmm. can mobilize to have a kitty mm -hmm. a medical kitty so that uh, children who have uh, you know uh, such cases uh, can be given uh, medicine for free like a uh, cancer can be brought on board mm -hmm. pharmaceutical companies can be brought on board mm -hmm. so that they actually provide medicine for these children because uh, sometimes it becomes very difficult uh, for their parents and even right now some of them you'll find that uh, they end up uh, having meltdowns because of the environment because uh, there's a the lockdown yeah well, they can all run here and there, and most of them are used to routine. As in, if, if it's going to the toilet, there's a routine, they're going to the toilet. Mm -hmm. If it's going to play, it's a routine, they're going to play. But right now you find that they're confined, mm -hmm. and most of them are, some, some of them are hyperactive, they cannot be confined. So eventually they get into town trams, eventually they get into meltdowns, and even parents themselves, parents of these children, are really, really psychologically affected, and they also need to be cushioned, yes, by yes, the way. Yes, yes they, they need to be brought on board. So yes that mm -hmm. they, they're being advised on how to take care of their children mm -hmm. because they may not know how to take care of their children. Remember, they have not gone for any training. Mm -hmm. They just gave birth to a child with a disability and they're trying to understand, you know, their children. They don't seem to understand their children. Nobody has given them training on how to, uh, to take care of their children, mm -hmm. on how to, you know, to suppress even the tantrums when they, they come about. So there's need to really empathize yes. with uh, yes. such families yes. and ensure yes. that these families are actually uh, being helped, even their parents, because uh -huh. they don't know what to do. Uh -huh. You see, like, uh, yeah, you, you want yes. to say yes. something? Yes, uh, actually, I wanted uh, to, to join that one. With the, you have been very passionate about people. Uh, living with disability and also helping out and you are also a cancer survivor yeah. you can kindly take us on a brief journey of that yeah because I, actually I'm quite sure you encourage so many people uh, to actually uh, fight this coronavirus yeah, yeah so the, uh, and I'm happy because you brought in the issue of cancer yes. yeah Be, because uh, as a cancer survivor I'll tell you for free that uh, I'm a living testimony I'm a miracle that God is able mm -hmm. because uh, I was not born with a disability, but because of cancer, I got a disability. But God has used that to ensure that I'm speaking on issues of disability, mm -hmm. to ensure also that I'm speaking on issues of cancer. Even right now, as you talk about the issue, issues, issues of cancer, now that you brought out, mm -hmm. there are so many people who are suffering 
cancer survivors. Some of them are active, you know, patients. Now, when you're talking of active patients, uh, these are, uh, you know, people who are not in the hospital, but they're living their normal lives, but they are cancer survivors. So you find that uh, they really have problems when it comes to getting medicine, when it comes to getting food, and uh, they have no one to run to. So there's need for the uh, for the Kagwe team to to see how to cushion such people. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, if NHIF can cover such people, it can be very good because mm -hmm. if they are covered, then it means that they can get their medication. And during this coronavirus, when it it comes to an end, we'll say that we all fought, mm -hmm. and these are cancer survivors, mm -hmm. but they still survive the corona. Virus. Yes. So we are in a fight and we have to ensure that uh, we are taking care of everyone. Everyone is being brought on board mm -hmm. so that uh, eventually we can stand the test uh, of time. And mm -hmm. I want to say even right now, I know of cancer, uh, uh, you know, cancer survivors. Uh, I, I know of a friend, who, uh, 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 she lives in, uh, around uh, not Ruiru, mm -hmm. sides of Ruiru, mm -hmm. when Dani Kahawa somewhere there. She's a cancer survivor but she keeps calling me. She's in a lot of pains. She doesn't know what to do and all that. So most of the time I find myself reaching out to her, just telling her, I'm sending you this amount of money. Can you buy diapers? Because uh, she cannot manage her situation. Can you buy food? Can you buy food and all that? Because I know the reality on the ground that yes, sometimes there's, uh, there's talk that we are reaching out to these people, but the reality, Sometimes these people, the deserving people, do not get the support. Because I'll tell you for, for sure, even cancer survivors who are supposed to benefit end up not benefiting. That's Sometimes true. even true. persons mm -hmm. with disabilities yes. who are really, really, truly, truly deserving, yes. you'll find they are crying their tears. Mm -hmm. They have no one to support them. Mm -hmm. They are left on their own. Even during this time, there are so many people with disabilities who are actually left on their own. Exactly. And uh, actually, we will look at that because the government uh, did release uh, uh, one bill for people with uh, uh, severe disabilities and of course a, a lot of uh, discussion came up with um, uh, saying uh, people a lot of people saying that that is not the real situation on the ground but we will get back to that and uh, talking of uh, giving out on Sunday you are in Kakamega mm -hmm. and uh, you are giving out um, uh, there are some things you are giving out and there's uh, somebody who there's a person living with a disability who is making uh, some mask and yes. uh, you actually uh, had a clarion call saying that uh, they should be given more support by the government. And if my director can uh, cue that, uh, there is um, uh, that clip uh, on Sunday. Kindly take us through what exactly you are doing on Sunday in relation to people living with disability. Now, uh, on Sunday, even before Sunday, mm -hmm. I received very many phone calls from uh, the SAID group. They kept telling me mm -hmm. that uh, they really want intervention. Okay, just a minute, just a minute. It's ready? It's ready? Thank you, Mugo. So, uh, oh, oh, oh. ability to make face masks for residents of Lugari constituency as the fight against COVID-19 intensifies. The group is said to have made over 500 masks in a day, even as the senator called on the government and other private sector players to aid them in getting the necessary raw materials. If you have a group of persons with disabilities in the community and they are able to make masks, give them a chance. If they're able to do something, give them a chance because they're productive members of this uh, community. Now, uh, I want to say that uh, before that time, uh -huh. they had re uh, reached out to me many times. They had called me mm -hmm. many times. They had sent SMSs telling me that uh, they are actually in dire need of uh, support mm -hmm. and uh, they, they want masks. Mm -hmm. They were telling me that they want uh, food. They were telling me that they want crutches. And they actually told me that all these things are not reaching them mm -hmm. on the ground. Yes. So I want to say that uh, it is a conversation uh, that uh, started. And uh, even when they talked to me, mm -hmm. I actually reached out to my governor and actually told him there is a group in Lugari that has actually sent me to to you mm -hmm. concerning that uh, they, they want to reach out to the society, mm -hmm. they want to be given an opportunity to uh, to make masks, and uh, they, they even told me th that uh, they can make the three, uh, you know, layer masks mm -hmm. where we, we have... Uh, the you know uh, the, the washable mask yes. the, the the cloth then the the, the gum mm -hmm. then uh, you know the, the, the other clothes the three face mm -hmm. so when they talked to me 
I actually talked to uh, the governor to see mm. how can we reach out uh, to these people. But uh, the more they called me and uh, I saw that uh, not much was forthcoming, that is when I decided, why don't I use my resources to do this? Mm -hmm. Because even in the past, and many times, mm -hmm. I've used my resources to buy crutches mm -hmm. for persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. I've used my own resources to even buy walking friends for persons with disabilities. Because mm -hmm. I know where the, 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 the shoe really Hats, pinches yes. most. Yes. Because sometimes when you talk about, uh, you know, uh, delivering crutches and all that, mm -hmm. many times I've even gone to the National Council as someone representing persons with disabilities, mm -hmm. telling them, uh, why don't you give me crutches to distribute? Why don't you give me, you know, workers to distribute? Because so many people are actually, you know, uh, calling me and all that. And as a nominated senator, we don't have a kitty to mm -hmm. do our activities. So, uh, I, in, in fact, the response I've gotten most of the time has mm -hmm. been very negative. So I go out of my way to do these activities that I'm doing out of an understanding of mm -hmm. the kind of people I'm leading. I'm one of them, mm -hmm. and I know what they go through. So what happened uh, you know, on Sunday yes. is that... Um, they wanted the materials, mm -hmm. and they gave me their budget. So uh, I, I bought the materials for them. Mm -hmm. They told me they have the talent they can make, and uh, they made the mass actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, before making the mass, uh, what I did, I donated also, uh, you know, a tank uh, mm -hmm. for for you know wash, uh, you know, a water tank mm -hmm. and some soaps for washing. And I told them. If you do any business and you want to serve Kenyans, you must start from the tank. Mm -hmm. That is, you have to wash your hands with soap and water and make sure that uh, they are clean enough. Then after that, you'll be free and ready to serve Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when it comes to uh, cleanliness and when it comes to hygiene, mm -hmm. and uh, when you're talking of uh, rural people, we have to really encourage the use of soap. Because soap is affordable. Yes. Sanitizers are not affordable. And so available too. And they're not also available. Yes. And even when you talk of sanitizer, they'll mm -hmm. not reach the ground. They'll not reach machinani. But soap can easily uh, reach. So, yes, because yes. it's there already. Yeah, because it's yeah. always there. Yes. And I also want to, to, to say that even people who are giving support mm -hmm. to persons with disabilities and other people, in the package they give, mm -hmm. they should ensure that there's soap in the package. In that package, yes. yes in that package. Uh -huh. Because, and I, I thank God, because, uh, you know, God, uh, God has allowed a disaster to come about, mm -hmm. but a disaster that can be sorted with soap which is affordable. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to say that uh, I, I went and I demonstrated how uh, we, we need to wash mm -hmm. our hands. Yes. I uh, actually okay. demonstrated to them and yes. I told them uh -huh. that uh, we, we need to wash uh, mm -hmm. in between our hands, in between the fingers, mm -hmm. in between the nails and all that. And uh, they did exactly that before working. Mm -hmm. And so when they worked, and okay. I wanted to say that uh, yes. I worked with the uh -huh. uh, local administration. The county commissioner was aware of what I was doing. Uh -huh. And uh, the, the ch assistant chief was also there to ensure that what we are doing was not illegal. And okay. what we were doing yes. was well-meaning Actually, it was Kenyans. a very noble, noble gesture. You will uh, tell us more on that. Plus, you have been very passionate about uh, people living with a disability, and especially children and education. And right now, we are seeing some, uh, some online uh, courses. Mm -hmm. The government uh, quite, okay, not quite sure when we are exactly, we will be resuming mm -hmm. school. So you will, will take us through that. But before that, we are heading to KMTC right here in Nairobi, where the hel our health reporter, Beauty himself is on standby uh, well of course there, there are safety measures being talked about when handling and especially mobile phones yes uh, this simple device can be uh, a hotspot uh, for various infections but let's uh, head on uh, right uh, there purity what's up A very good morning to you, Ben Troy and Jue. We are coming to you from KMTC and still following up on ways that Kenyans could protect themselves from getting COVID-19. And of course, uh, one of the guidelines by the Minister of Health on prevention of COVID-19 is avoiding touching of surfaces or washing your hands, sanitizing them when you interact with different surfaces. But there is an issue that has come up on the use of mobile phones because most of the time they're usually uh, placed in different surfaces and therefore there is a need or a call to clean them regularly. And therefore now, uh, this morning, we are joined by Gamalian Omondi, who will be helping us know how exactly mobile phones or how possible, how can mobile phones transmit COVID-19? And therefore, if that 
what is possible, how do we uh, keep them clean to just stop this. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. First, uh, tell us, um, I know there is the issue of surfaces, interacting with surfaces, touching surfaces. We should avoid, or when we do that, we wash our hands. But now, for the mobile phones, most of the time they are placed on surfaces. Uh, how do mobile phones transmit COVID-19? Do we have a concept like that? Uh, thank you very much, Purity. Uh, that there is a concept on how we need to handle our mobile phone. But first of all, it will be important for us and the general public to understand, arising from surfaces, that COVID-19 virus can stay in a surface for almost nine hours. So that is uh, quite a, a period of time. And in the process, as we touch the surfaces and we continue touching the phones, it therefore means that our phones are also potential uh, instruments that can easily spread COVID-19 to the general public. And uh, it is important to warn those of us who work closely uh, with suspected uh, cases and also confirmed cases that we avoid as much as possible touching our phones while in those areas because we may go back at home and while at home our children also begin to play with our phones. That is a potential risk for our community and our children. So uh, uh, the precautions that we need to take very much, if not avoidable, is that we avoid touching our phones as frequently as we normally do. Just touch your phone when very, very necessary, uh, when you want to communicate. For the young people, that's a little bit difficult. Because most of the time our phones are in our hands throughout. Yes, now for the, for, for the parents and children who exchange phones with their kids, this is the time now to restrict that kind of behavior so that we protect them for the time being. But for normal adults, we are also saying that we know it is a mobile phone, it aids in communication, but it can also be a potential risk in terms of COVID-19 transmission. Mm -hmm. So as we take measures, let us also take measures to protect ourselves against the use of mobile phones. In the event that you are going to use your mobile phone, then there are procedures that you may require to undertake where, when you are in a workplace or where you are. Uh, and that procedure will be decontamination of the mobile phone. And as we have always said, we know mobile phones are handled by our hands. But when we are now listening and talking, it is around our ears and eyes and the face and the nose. So it is also possible that it can peak if we don't have the masks. So then there is, uh, it is very, very important that we sanitize or clean them frequently the way we are saying we need to frequently clean our hands. So this goes back again to hand hygiene. Even when you are touching your phones after touching surfaces, please ensure that you do proper hand hygiene the way it has been always demonstrated and the way it is running all in the media, procedurally. Mm -hmm. Let us not just hurry up and say we have disinfected our hands. Uh, the, the handset that we have or the mobile phone will simply pick what is in our hands mm -hmm. and will also pick what is in the surface if you place it in the surface. So we emphasize on cleaning of surfaces, then cleaning of the mobile phones. So take us through the steps. For example, you get to your office or to your workplace and you, should you be keeping storage of the mobile phone? Or should you be keeping it on the table or in your handbag, your pocket, the storage part of it? Yeah, for you to have it a little bit more uh, or to reduce to the minimal levels of transmission, then it is advisable you use a package which could be a polythene to handle your handset. In that polythene, you still can be able to call, you can still be able to do all other things. And this polythene paper, might be disposed of by the end of the day or can be disinfected when you go back to the house in the evening. Okay. Uh, now outside the polythene and the storage, then you need now to clean it when you have a sanitizer. But we also have recommended chemicals that we use to clean the mobile phones. The first recommended one is ethanol. And the second one is isopropyl alcohol. Then the third one is the one we normally use in the health setup, hydrogen peroxide for the decontamination of items. And uh, the fourth one is what we now use in spraying uh, fumigation. 
the uh, sodium hypochlorite. So how often should you uh, clean your phone with that, disinfect your phone? Uh, purity, as I said earlier, as we encourage people to wash their hands or to sanitize their hands frequently, the mobile phone should also be sanitized frequently. That is when prevention will be observed optimally. Could you show us how to go about that? So then when you need to clean your mobile phone, uh, we encourage every other person now to be having a hand wash facility, uh, running water with, so with soap. And we also encourage people to have sanitizers where we don't have running water. And as for my case, I have sanitizer. I will make sure that I sanitize my hands first because that is the first step we need to take. So I will, my sanitizer is also alcohol-based sanitizer, 70% alcohol. So it can also be used to sanitize the phones. Yeah. So I will do my procedures the way they have been emphasized properly well, which takes about 20 to 40 seconds. before you touch your phone, so that your hands are clean. Okay. Then you now need to go to your phone, and I'll pick my phone, which is this one. Now this phone has surfaces, there is the touch screen and there is the back part of it. The back part of it has got openings. First of all, we need to protect these openings by making sure as you screen, there is no liquid that goes in because these are chemicals, and these chemicals could react with the phone itself and it might end up dying off. So the first step is to switch off your phone properly. So you put it off. After you have put it off. Why are you putting it off? As I said, there are chemicals and there are also uh, uh, electronic, uh, magne uh, uh, electromagnetic waves that could react. So then you put it off so that when you use the chemical, there is no potential reaction. Yeah. Then you need to use a sterile cloth. And the most recommended is the cloth that is used to clean the lenses of our glasses. That is very, very good to use on this surface. So you will only use, for my case, I'll use this one. It is sterile. And I'll put the sanitizer just a bit that is enough to now run it around the surfaces. Of course, trying to avoid the openings on the phone. So once I do that, remember I said you need ethanol, you may need isopropyl alcohol, you may need hydrogen peroxide, and you can also use uh, hypochlorite, sodium hypochlorite. So then you use your cloth to make sure that you touch on every surface. Every surface. Yeah, for those who are not uh, prone to using it so much, you can clean it once a day, or a morning, evening. But for those of us who frequently use it and are also working on surfaces, then you need to do frequent cleaning. Because at every point, you might have placed it where it, uh, an area which is contaminated, so you will just need to clean it. Okay. Yeah, and uh, because it goes to your ears, your nose area, your mouth area, then that is a potential uh, source that would uh, uh, help transmit this virus. So after how long do you switch it on? Once it is cleaned, it is dry, you can switch it on and make sure that it does not have a lot of moisture in it. So that sanitizer is only supposed to be enough, just enough to make it sanitized. So you don't put a lot of it. All right. Yes. I um, think that would be all. Yeah, I think that is all. Okay, thank you so much, Gamaliel. And of course, uh, uh, Ben Troy, enjoy just trying to 
understand the safety measures, especially on the use of mobile phones, because this is a gadget that we use on a daily basis, and, and, and the importance of knowing that it can pick up uh, the germs, and as you use it or touch it, then that's an avenue of transmitting the coronavirus. And therefore, that has been Gamade Lomondi just trying to know and help us stay safe during this time we are fighting COVID, uh, spread of COVID-19, and of course, the mobile phone, very crucial gadget, but most people forgetting that it could uh, be an avenue of transmitting COVID-19. Hope you've learned a, a few techniques on how to handle your mobile phones during this time and how to clean it. Ben Trenjoy, it's back to you in studio. I'm Purity Musel. Uh, thank you. That has been our health reporter, Purity Musel, there. And of course, uh, with an expert uh, just to take us through how uh, to make sure your phone is clean and safe. That was a ga Gamariel uh, Omondi. Uh, for, for sure is that it's on, not only the phone, as he has said, uh, but every electronic device that you are using. Could be the remote, uh, could be the keyboard, could be a laptop, uh, or any, any, any uh, de ga device that you have actually uh, to use with your hands. In case you're joining us right now, this is News Check. I'm Ben Troy Njue. Uh, Lensa Odingo is handling the sign language interpretation. And uh, today I'm honored to be hosting uh, nominated a Senator uh, Gertrude Musuruve, Dr. Sorry, Dr. Gertrude uh, Musuruve, who is also a nominated uh, member of parliament, uh, nominated Senator rather, and also a member of the Education Committee at the Senate. Uh, talking about education at the Senate, uh, the CBC, some have, uh, have criticized, talking about it has not factored all the needs of special needs uh, uh, kids. Do you concur with that? Uh, or it has been comprehensive on the same? Yes, I want to say that uh, when it comes to the CBC mm -hmm. and where I sit mm -hmm. as a teacher and as a lecturer, I want to say that it has not factored all needs of persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's some persons with disabilities, probably uh, those with visual challenges mm -hmm. might have uh, been factored mm -hmm. because uh, Braille can be used and uh, they will not miss out on anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're able to hear. But uh, there's a section of uh, learners, uh, mm -hmm. th that is uh, the deaf. When it comes to the deaf, the CBC has not really factored in, uh, you know, uh, their issues. Like, uh, for instance, during this COVID time, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I had the benefit of watching uh, education program on uh, mainstream media. Yes. And I thought it was a very good thing mm -hmm. because uh, even children in the confines of, uh, you, you know, the environment, those who have television and uh, those who have smartphones. And radio too. Yeah, yes. yeah radio mm -hmm. can easily get uh, the information. But when it comes to the deaf, mm -hmm. they cannot really get that information. And uh, I want to say that even before COVID, this particular group has been left behind completely mm -hmm. because uh, uh, even when the 844 system was introduced, mm -hmm. Kiswahili was introduced to all the groups, yes. but Kiswahili was denied mm -hmm. to the deaf. It was not developed. And even right now, if you want to develop anything uh, on Kiswahili, uh, you know, KICD will not approve. I am a witness mm -hmm. that uh, I even, uh, I, I remember sitting in the education committee, I came up with books to fill the gaps that are there. The books were launched by, by the Senate. I've been distributing those books for free. And by the way, I even took a loan to develop the books, and I'm still paying the loan now. The uh, you're, you're saying uh, Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development did not approve that? They approved some books that I, I actually took yes. a loan to uh -huh. develop, uh -huh. and which I'm de uh, giving out for free, okay. because they have not been procured by, the, you know, by anyone. Mm -hmm. But as a leader, I say that I will fill the gap and history will judge me mm -hmm. as an actionable leader who decided to use my own resources to fill the gap. Mm -hmm. I remember also developing uh, books in Kiswahili to help the deaf learners. We took them to KICD. KICD refused to approve. Okay. And they said that mm -hmm. uh, Kiswahili is not in the syllabus. So they actually did not approve. And so as a leader, you see the gaps that are there, mm -hmm. but you see that there's no one who is uh, you know, uh, actually uh, filling the gaps, and no one is ready, and people are reluctant. But I want to say that uh, even during this COVID time, 
on the mainstream media, mm -hmm. you'll see learners being taught. Yes. But when it comes to the deaf, they're missing out. Because uh, I want to give an example of, uh, Dennis, I want to give an example mm -hmm. of mathematics. Mm -hmm. You know, the deaf have uh, language issues. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can teach them maths electronically and you're as fast as, you know, the, the, the teachers are going. Some of them are slow learners, mm -hmm. and there's need to have programs for slow learners. So I want to say that the Ministry of Education needs to actually combine forces with the NAD. They need to, even, in fact, the government needs to fund NAD mm -hmm. so that uh, NAD develops cl clips on how uh, you know the deaf can be taught and uh, in a slow motion mood and uh, you know clips that will help them get information because what is happening right now mm -hmm. even if schools open these ones have already lagged behind and there's no way they'll catch up with the rest mm -hmm. so i want to say that uh, when it comes to children with disabilities mm -hmm. uh, during this covid time yes. they're actually not being helped much and also i want to talk about uh, there are also children uh, like the ones i talked about the the, the, the ones with the new neurodevelopmental issues like autism yes, yes. like autism uh -huh. you see for such children right now they are not doing physiotherapy right now they don't have a shadow teacher so when uh, you, you know schools open they're going to retrogress mm -hmm. and the muscles will be in disuse so you'll find that if someone was even working well then the muscles will be in disuse and the person will not be able to work well well if the person was able to do this activity as a child was able to do activity a you know, before COVID, you find that uh, when uh, schools open, then the child will have forgotten because these are children who are used to routine, you know, uh, you routine activities. But now that the routine activities are not there, the shadow teachers are not there, their parents, their own parents have not been trained. They, they, you know, they're they not teachers. They don't know how to handle these children. So they have not been told how to handle their children. Mm -hmm. So you find that uh, these children will lag behind. So there's need, I, I want to suggest that uh, there's need for this, uh, the parents of these children to, to, to be given clips on how to manage, you know, uh, mm -hmm. how to manage uh, their children while at home. And uh, I want to say that... Uh, and actually it's, it's easy because the government has a record of uh, these people living with disability. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it is actually easy because they are known mm -hmm. and since they're known the government can bring uh, can devise a mechanism of ensuring that the parents are enlightened mm -hmm. on how to take care of their children while at home because right now i can assure you dennis there are so many parents who are crying mm -hmm. You know, they have children with disabilities. They don't know how to handle them. Sometimes, you know, the children are in tantrums. Sometimes they, they have meltdowns. Sometimes they are destructive. They don't know what to do. And then mm -hmm. you see, you find that there are some aids that they need. Yes. Uh, and these aids are not available in their homes. There are meals that they need. The parents don't have the money to buy meals. Now, there are even some children who have fits you know they get yes. into seizures yes. so you, you'll find that uh, sometimes a parent may be you know uh, confused on how to handle such a child the a parent does not have uh, medicine so there's need for the government to just supply because th these children are known there's need for the government to look for a mechanism of supplying mm -hmm. drugs you know to the, these parents and also there's a need also for the government to ensure that uh, the parents of these children have letters to allow them to to travel just to hospital, <laughs> just in case yes. the, the children are in uh, fits and they don't know what to do. You see, you cannot just uh, uh, see a child dying and as a parent you are helpless, you don't know what to do about the parent. And apart from even children, there are even adults who get these seizures. So the, these fits. So you cannot just uh, look at an adult dying because uh, you know uh, the, the adult cannot go to hospital in the night. So there's need for the, uh, you know. Um, there's need to look for a mechanism of ensuring that uh, these families are given letters yes. just in case such a thing erupts. Mm -hmm. They can go to hospital without being harassed by police. Okay. Because uh, you, you see, uh, mm -hmm. police force uh, actually, in as much as they're doing a, a double job, mm -hmm. they're not enlightened about issues of disability. Mm -hmm. If you meet them out there and you are disabled, they, they will not even understand. They'll just uh, clobber you and all that, like yes. an issue that happened yes. in Shanda. Yes. You see, yes. in Shanda, uh -huh. there's a deaf uh, who was, you know, uh, almost uh, past curfew time mm -hmm. no 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 not really past curfew time it was uh, i think 10 to mm -hmm. 7 and then there's a police uh, a police officer mm -hmm. who was behind so he talked to to the deaf but he didn't know that this was deaf and he, the police officer just imagined that this man was rude and then the person was clobbered so yes you see, Actually, that was my that was yes. uh, was my next question on the curfew uh, we uh, we had so many cases of people living with disabilities who have been hurt uh, during the curfew have you uh, received as a legislator have you received some of the complaints and what exactly are you planning to do on the same 
The Law Society of Kenya did say that uh, they will be also helping out uh, and asked anybody uh, who had been uh, violated by the curfew or by the officers uh, should, come, uh, should come out and uh, complain. Have you received such complaints uh, as well? I have received the complaint, mm -hmm. but uh, I've received a complaint on social media just like anybody else, like the case of Shanda, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, Sh Shanda. Yes. It was all over in the media mm -hmm. that this person was even taken, uh, you know, uh, was even taken to hospital. But uh, you know, the 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 the, the, uh, the police inter actually intervened. I'm happy because uh, something happened because uh, the policeman was arrested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was a right move. But what I'm saying, apart from arresting the policeman, mm -hmm. there is need also for the security forces to be enlightened about issues of disability yes. because they do not know. Sometimes you blame them because they do not know. Eh? We just blame them, but they, they are not aware. So they need to uh, ensure that uh, in all organizations, sensitization of issues of disability is at the apex, so that all organizations have someone employed to carry out these activities, to sensitize people. Mm -hmm. And apart from sensitizing people, they need to also ensure all organizations that they have a permanent person who is employed to interpret in, in the event that uh, they're, they're coming up with information or they're releasing information to the public or they're going to, uh, to uh, you know, to give, like, like for instance, this corona, uh, you know, information. This corona mm -hmm. updates mm -hmm. are on daily basis. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, hold the thought, hold the thought. Uh, but right now, Treasury CES, uh, Ukuri Yatani is having a presser. Let's have a look uh, at what the CES is talking about. We'll be heading back to that uh, place as soon as it commences, uh, but we are still uh, right here talking about the challenges that people living with disabilities are facing uh, because actually, as we said, and as the uh, doctor has said, is that they are facing an additional change, uh, challenge other than the, just the COVID-19. Uh, there are other challenges that they are facing, and even some have uh, conditions that uh, warrant them uh, to actually be seeking medical treatment uh, on a normal basis. Kindly, uh, uh, apologies for, for the interruption, you. but uh, you are talking about even having uh, people in the offices to, to enlighten people on this. Yes, Dennis. Uh, mm -hmm. What I'm suggesting mm -hmm. is that uh, when it comes to issues of disabilities, it should not be on a needs basis. Like, for instance, when there's a disaster. You know, a disaster is usually a shocking moment, but mm -hmm. when information is being given to the public concerning uh, the disaster, yes. there is need to ensure that when the disaster is being relayed, when someone is talking about information and giving information even about COVID, yes. then a sign language interpreter should be there mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. I'm happy because uh, the Kawe team has a sign language interpreter. Yes. But it should also cascade to the counties so mm -hmm. that even when county executives are making pronouncements, are giving information, mm -hmm. let that dissemination be felt by persons with disabilities. So let counties also employ interpreters on, uh, on permanent basis. Mm -hmm. It should not be on a needs basis. Because when it comes to information, okay. information is not on a needs uh, basis. basis. It's so and apart right. from, yes, yes, and also yeah. apart from counties, yes. uh, just a second, uh -huh. apart from counties, is I want to put a strong case that all organizations need to have a sign language interpreter so all that if they are talking about disasters uh -huh. in their organization and they're talking to the media let the sign language interpreter be side to si side by side yes. with whoever is giving information because information is power okay. only if it is shared and shared appropriately and it is received by those right who are time. supposed to receive yes uh, indeed uh, let's uh, head to Okuri uh, Atani CS uh, for Treasury uh, presser that has just commenced. Particularly now, as the nation is seeking better ways to foster growth and development. Over time, government has formulated numerous policies and programs targeted at bringing about rapid transformation of the economy, which undoubtedly calls for close and regular monitoring to ascertain the impact. 
Specifically, development initiatives such as the Big Four Agenda, the Vision 2030, and the Sustainable Development Goals require comprehensive data to monitor their progress. Ladies and gentlemen, the Economic Survey Report provides a candid appraisal of the achievements and the challenges as well as the pursuit for greater development of our nation and better welfare for our people. This report will be crucial in formulating policies to tackle poverty and unemployment, among us other challenges. The key 2020 economic survey findings includes, among others, the global economy recorded a decelerated growth of 2.9% in 2019 compared to 3.5% in 2018. This was the slowest growth post-global financial crisis of 2017-2018. The slow growth was as a result of policy uncertainty, declines in global trade and investment, and slowdown in the labor productivity. I am delighted to note that the economic activity in the domestic economy remained vibrant in 2019, through the perform though the performance slower relative to 2018. The real growth, the gross domestic product, grew by 5.4% in 2019, compared to a growth of 6.3% in 2018. The growth, albeit slow, slower than 2018, was spread across all sectors of the economy, but was more pronounced in service-oriented sectors. The slow growth in 2019 was also reflected in other macroeconomic indicators. The annual inflation increased from 4.7% in 2018 to 5.2% .2 in 2019. The increase in inflation was mainly due to the less favorable weather condition in the first half of 2019, though registering gradual improvement over the remaining part of the year, resulting in drop in food prices and overall inflation. It is important to note that prudent macroeconomic policies and stable Kenya shilling against the major currencies, especially the US dollars, helped in containing the inflation. The current account deficit increased by 10.9% to Kenya shilling 567 billion in 2019 from a deficit of Kenya shilling 511.5 billion in 2018. There was also a slowdown in activities at the Nairobi Security Exchange as the 20 share index dropped from 2,674 points in December 2019 from 20, uh, 2,801 in 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, turning to the sectoral performers, the agriculture, forestry, and fishing sector grew by 3.6% in 2019 compared to 6.0% in 2018. The decelerated growth was occasioned by the extreme weather phenomenon characterized by drought during the first half of 2019, followed by high rainfall in the second half of the year that culminated in redu reduced production of selected crops. The sector, however, benefited from modest increase in, public in production of potatoes, rice, and wheat, as well as significant improved production of drought-resistant crops, such as sorghum and millet in 2019. Coffee production went up from 41.4 thousand tons in 2018 to 45 thousand tons in 2019. However, tea production decreased by 6.9 percent to 458.5 thousand tons in 2019 from 493 thousand tons uh, in 2018. In the sugarcane subsector, Total cane production decreased by 12.5 percent from 5.3 million tons in 2018 to 4.6 million tons in 2019, further exacerbating the underperformance in the cash crop subsector. Production of maize decreased by 10.8 percent to 39.8 million bucks in 2019. The volume of horticultural export increased by 1.8 percent from 322.6 thousand tons in 2018 to 328.3 tons in 2019. The volume of milk deliveries to processors increased by 5.3 percent from 634.3 million liters in 2018 
to 668.2 million liters in 2019. In the forestry subsector, the area stocked under government forest plantation increased from 141,600 hectares in 2018 to 147,600 hectares in 2019. Mining subsector recorded decline in the production of most of the major minerals during the period under review. The value of minerals produced declined by 5.5% from Kenya shilling 30.8 billion in 2018 to Kenya shilling 29.1 billion in the review period. Total fish output declined by 0.5% from 146.1 thousand tons in 2018 to 145.3 thousand tons in 2019. This resulted in a 7.8% decline in earnings to Kenya shilling 23.5 billion in 2019 from Kenya shilling 25.5 billion in 2018, following a drop in volume of fish landed. In the manufacturing sector, I hasten to add that the sector slowed down to 3.2% in 2019 compared to a growth of 43, 4.3% uh, in 2018. The growth was attributed to an increase in production of motor vehicles, trailers, plastics, animal and vegetable fats and oils, and pharmaceutical products. Subsectors such as production of wood and wood products, sugar, electrical equipment, and other non-metallic mineral products registered declines during the period under review. Cement production dropped marginally by 1% to 5,962 .2 thousand tons in 2019. Domestic sales by export processing zones enterprises which include sales to duty-free shops, also doubled during their period and the review. However, exports which formed the bulk sales by the EPZ enterprises declined by 5.4% from Kenya shilling 72.3 billion in 2018 to Kenya shilling 68.5 billion in 2019. This translated into a marginal reduction in the sales by the EPZ enterprises from Kenya shilling 77.2 billion in 2018 to Kenya shilling 77.1 billion in 2019. Credit advance to enterprises involving manufacturing activities rose by 9.2%, 9.3% to stand at Kenya shilling 366.9 billion in 2019, a further indication of the increased activity in the sector during the period under review. In the sector of building and construction sector, the building construction sector, the gross value added was estimated to have risen by 6.4% in 2019 compared to 6.9% in 2018. The decelerated growth was attributable to the gradual cessation of activities related to the construction of, this, of the standard gauge railway that was completed in the year under review. The slowdown in the sector's performance was reflected in consumption of cement, which declined marginally from 5,948.7 thousand tons in 2018 to 5,933.3 thousand tons in 2019. During the period under review, the total length of roads paved increased by 14.2% to 21,295 kilometers in 2019. Uptake of credit in the construction uh, sector grew by 1.6% from Kenya shilling 114 billion in 2018 to 115.8 billion in 2019, slower than 1.8% growth in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, the financial and insurance sector remain on a growth trajectory to expand by 6.6% in 2019 compared to 5.3% growth realized in 2018. Financial service subsectors grew by 5.7% in 2019, relative to 4.8% recorded in 2018. Domestic credits grew by 7.5% in 2019, compared to a growth of 6.4% uh, in 2019. Credit to the national government increased by 4.8% from Kenya shilling 859 billion as of December 2018 to Kenya shilling 
900.4 billion as at December 2019, while credit to the private sector rose by 7.1% from Kenya shilling 2,490.1 billion in 2018 to Kenya shilling 267.9 billion in 2019. In the insurance subsector, net premium from life insurance increased from Kenya shilling 80.4 billion in 2018 to Kenya shilling 90.5 billion, while, gener while general insurance business recorded a decelerated growth of 1.1% in 2019. On public finance, the national government expenditure in 2019-2020 is expected to grow by 10.6% to Kenya shilling 3,256 billion from Kenya shilling 2,944 billion spent in 2018-2019. Recurrent and development outlays are estimated to grow by 3% and 42% to Kenya shilling 2,447.2 billion and Kenya shilling 808.9 billion, respectively, during the review period. Total revenue is expected to grow by 21.4% uh, to Kenya shilling 2.13 trillion. Total revenue is expected to grow by 10.3% to Kenya shilling 1.893 trillion, of which tax, re tax revenue is estimated at Kenya shilling 1.771 trillion. Regarding the total stock of public debt, the external debt accumulated accounted for 57% of the total debt stock. The county government expenditure is expected to increase by 19.2% to Kenya shilling 483.4 billion from actual expenditure of Kenya shilling 405.5 billion in 2018-2019. Current transfers from national government to the county government, inclusive of conditional grants, is increased marginally to Kenya shilling 373.6 billion in 2019-2020 from Kenya shilling 372.5 in 2018-2019. On the international trade and balance of payments, the value of total trade rose from Kenya shilling 2,378 billion in 2018 to Kenya shilling 2,403 billion in 2019, while total value of exports declined by 2.9% to Kenya shilling 596.7 billion and import bill increased by 2.4% to Kenya shilling 1,806 1, billion in 2019. Re-exports rose by 6.2% from Kenya shilling 71.4 billion in 2018 to Kenya shilling 75 billion in 2019. The rise in the total import bill against the decline in total export earnings led to the deterioration of export-import ratio from 34.8% in 2018 to 33% in 2019. The balance of payments position improved from a surplus of Kenya shilling 103 billion in 2018 to a surplus of Kenya shilling 106 billion in 2019, supported by a build-up in reverse reserve assets. On the workforce, the total person engaged in the modern and informal sectors went up from 17.3 million in 2018 to 18.1 million in 2019. Total new jobs generated in the economy were 843,000 in 2019. Employment in the modern sector recorded a growth of 2.4% in 2019 compared to 2.8% in 2018. In the year under review, a total of 61.8 thousand jobs were created in the modern sector. The informal sector is estimated to have, to have created 767 thousand new jobs in 2019, compared to 744 thousand new jobs in 2018. The nominal wage bill rose from Kenya shilling 2,058 billion in 2018 to Kenya shilling 2,311 billion 
in 2019, an increase of 12.3%. The private sector wage bill went up by 10.6% to standard Kenya shilling 1,609 1, uh, billion in 2019, while the public sector wage bill rose by 16.2%. Average earnings increased by 2.7% in 2018 compared to 3.2% recorded in the previous year. In the sector of accommodation and food service activities, these sectors were vibrant in spite of pockets of insecurity concerns experienced during the year under review. The, sec the sector gross value added rose by 10.3% compared to 16.6% growth in 2018. The growth of the sector in the period under review was supported by hidden uh, security, relaxation of travel advisories by governments of, by governments of key tourism de markets and political stability that prevail in the, in the country. The number of international visa, visa arrivals increased by 0.4% to 2,035,000 2, in 2019, which was a slow growth compared to a 14% in 2018. Tourism earnings grew by 3.9% in 2018 to Kenya shilling 163.6 billion in 2019. In the energy sector, the total volume of petroleum products imported stood at 6.1 million tons in 2019. During the same period, exports and domestic petro petroleum products declined by 16.3% to register 23.2 thousand tons. The total import bill of petroleum products decreased to Kenya shilling 316.6 billion. However, the total value of petroleum products exported, including <coughs> re-exports, increased by 12.1% to Kenya shilling 43.6 billion in 2019. Total installed capacity increased to 2,818 megawatts in 2019 from 2,711 megawatts in 2018. Geothermal capacity increased significantly by 25% to 824.4 megawatts in 2019. This was mainly as a result of Kenya Electricity Generating Company, Kenjian, adding the first unit of its Olkaria 4 geothermal power plant at Olkaria to the grid in the review period. Wind generation significantly increased from 374 gigawatts in 2018 to 1,562 gigawatts in 2018, 2019, while solar generation rose um, in case you're joining us right now, this is News Check. That has been uh, Okur Yatani giving uh, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics a survey, and especially for uh, last year. This year, 2020, a lot of economies, uh, world economies, including Kenya, has been hard hit by the coronavirus pandemic. But from what we've had, uh, 2019 was quite a promising year uh, as opposed to... Uh, to 2018. Of course, uh, some are changing, 2018 being far much better than 2019. But economically, we will be bringing you um, a comprehensive uh, brief on that. We have a reporter there, a business reporter, Betty Kitum. Uh, but uh, right now, we are taking a short breather. We will be right back. Stay safe from coronavirus. Let's move forward to easy steps. One, Osha Mikono Kila time for 20 seconds. Atta on Zaimba. Happy birthday, Marambili. 
tu usishike uso macho na mapua yako especially kama ujosha mkono 3 ukitaka kuko utumie tishu alafu utupe kwa dustbin ama uko kwa elbow Ko avoid kwenda mahali kuna watu wengi ama kusalimia mtu na kuhagi mtu In case usikie uko mgonjwa please ambia parents wako ama guardians wako Let's all stay safe Top on channel 1 Oh well it's important that we know who that woman is We have to find out everything about her. Don't you move, okay? It could be the people who are looking for you. They won't be able to open it, though. May I suggest that you perhaps get yourself a very good lawyer and very soon. This is garbage. Welcome back. This is News Check. And uh, earlier on, we had been having a discussion on how people are living with disabilities, and especially now when we have a COVID-19 challenge, are actually coping. And uh, actually, we have uh, a legislator who is also living with a disability, Dr. Gertrude Musurve, who is a nominated uh, senator and also a member of the Education Committee of uh, the Senate. Moshima, um, before we, we left, uh, we, were, we have been uh, discussing on uh, quarantine because um, there, there are people living with disabilities who have been uh, quarantined. Some of them do need special care or special attention. Do you think this has been factored in? No, uh, thank you for bringing out uh, this issue of quarantine. And uh, I want to say that uh, the issue of quarantine can really be a challenge for persons with uh, disabilities, mm -hmm. uh, simply because uh, some of them may not even afford to pay for the yes. quarantine, yeah. uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. monies that are there. Yes. Like, for instance, if uh, someone is uh, quarantined in a place where they're supposed to pay uh, 2,000 mm -hmm. uh, per, uh, per day, yes. where would someone with a disability get that amount of money? Mm -hmm. So I want to say that... Um, Quarantining uh, persons with disabilities uh, can be quite a challenge because uh, I'm looking at a situation where uh, maybe a number of uh, persons with disabilities are quarantined. They're not able to pay for their facilities. For instance, if they're at Kenyatta University or KMTC, they'll be there and the bills will accumulate. And when they accumulate and they're not able to pay, so colleges will reopen and find the PWD still there unable to pay for the quarantine. So I, I want to say that uh, when it comes to quarantine uh, facilities, even the county governments need to be uh, to ensure that they, they factor in the issue of disability. So that if there are isolation <coughs> centers, let county executives uh, ensure that there are isolation centers that will cater for persons with disabilities just in case they are quarantined. For instance, the case of uh, the, the children I was talking about, children with developmental issues. If they are quarantined, they cannot go alone. They must go with someone to take care of them because they need special attention. So even in the counties, there is need also for people to be trained who will take care of uh, PWDs who are quarantined. Because the people are not trained in the counties to take yes. care of quarantined mm -hmm. PWDs, it means the PWDs will be neglected, people will not care about them until maybe, God forbid, if uh, they, they die or if they heal and go back to uh, the society. But there's need for all county executives to ensure that uh, they are factoring in the issue of disability. There's an isolation center for uh, PWDs. There's enough room for PWDs. Like for instance, if someone is a wheelchair user and you are quarantined uh, with uh, a number of people, you need a lot of space. So if you need a lot of space, then it means that uh, county executives need to factor in that. 
if someone is quarantined and someone has visual impairment, that person needs an aid. You cannot, uh, you know, he cannot operate on his own. So mm -hmm. if a person needs an aid, then there's need to have even a room for an aid. So there's need to put mechanisms in place to ensure mm -hmm. that even as county governments are making preparations to ensure they are coming up with quarantine <laughs> facilities, mm -hmm. let them also uh, come up with quarantine facilities for persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, this would ensure that persons with disabilities are not left behind. Remember, even before COVID, persons with disabilities have been neglected. But during this COVID time, if we are not very careful, then they'll be neglected even more than they've been neglected. Yes. So there's need to ensure <laughs> that uh, the, the, there's preparation uh, for these people. Yes. And even as we ensure that there's preparation for these people, mm -hmm. when it comes to quarantine, mm -hmm. quarantine should be a justifiable way of ensuring that uh, we, we are ensuring that the disease is not spreading. Not a punishment. No, it should yes. not be a punishment. Mm -hmm. Because if it becomes yes. a punishment, it would be too overwhelming. Like, for instance, mm -hmm. the, the, the people I mentioned with disabilities who are caught, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they, they were clobbered. It was actually not justifiable. But even if they are quarantined, because, uh, you know, they, 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 have, uh, they have not observed the curfew laws, it will still be a nightmare mm -hmm. for, uh, for, for, for the government. So I want to say, even <coughs> uh, as I talk about quarantine, persons with disabilities, and this, I'm putting this word to persons with disabilities, wherever you are, can you ensure that uh, you keep the curfew laws? Can you ensure by six, or even 6, uh, six thirty in the evening, you are in the house? And even caretakers of persons with disabilities, can you ensure that, uh, you are ensure that uh, persons with disabilities who are assigned to you, your family members, are in the house before the curfew time? That is the message I'm passing. But I'm also passing a message to the police officers. When you find persons with disabilities out there, and they're struggling with their crutches, they're struggling with their wheelchairs, kindly, for the sake of God, on humanitarian ground, just help them reach where they're going because they're, it is not their wish. It is not their fault. And we have to know as Kenyans, God will judge us because yes. when it yes. comes to issues of disabilities, everyone is a candidate of disability. Well said. Uh, <clears throat> talking about how the government should, uh, of course, carry itself when it comes to quarantining uh, people living with disability. I do remember on 20th March, uh, the, the, the PS and Nelson Mara did announce that the government had released a billion shillings, uh, which was going to be distributed to people living with uh, a severe disability. And uh, there have been arguments that uh, what criteria did they use? Because the number given for those people who are going to benefit with that money, uh, we, we saw them on television and on social media, a lot of them saying that I'm also a person living with severe disabilities, but I've not been able to access any help by the government. Now, uh, Ben, I can attest to that, mm -hmm. that even when I went to Lugari and the activities you saw me doing, yes. I actually did the activities with my own money. But the reality on the ground, there are people who have severe disabilities, but they're not getting the cash transfers. They're not getting the money, and yet they're deserving cases. Mm -hmm. Even right now, today in the morning, mm -hmm. there's just someone, a caretaker from Lugari, who called me and told me, uh, Senator, I have a child with a disability. Uh, the cash transfer was coming up to five months ago, and then it stopped. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the, the reality on the ground is that not all deserving cases are, are getting, getting the, the, you know, the cash transfers. Mm -hmm. And I want to suggest uh, that uh, it would be a noble thing also for, uh, for at least the government to ensure that they're lifting up their vulnerables. Mm -hmm. There are people with disabilities who are working. Those ones the government can say, at mm -hmm. least they're working. Then there are people with disabilities who are not working. Mm -hmm. For those people with disabilities who are not working, probably uh, we can have a system like in the a U.S. Stipend or something. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Where the, you know all persons with disabilities who are not working are actually given some stipend, mm -hmm. something just to cushion them yes. because they are not working. And I want to say that when it comes to employment, mm -hmm. not many organizations are willing to employ persons with disabilities. You'll find sometimes even persons with disabilities have papers, and uh, when it comes to jobs, they're not mm -hmm. given jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, some uh, in some counties. Uh, the, I remember trying to make a follow-up for some people to be employed. You know, they had papers and, and they had disabilities. They are not employed. And I was just told that, uh, you know, having a disability is not a criteria. And yet constitutionally, yes. Article 54 yes. says clearly that uh, 
persons with disabilities should be given nominative and elective positions. positions. So people have been given, there's a window, a free window, where persons with disabilities can be employed. Not necessarily if they have papers or not, because the article says clearly, and uh, does not uh, state whether they are qualifications, because a person with, dis with disability can do a desk job, a person with disability can do many other jobs. Mm -hmm. So there's need also mm -hmm. for organizations to really be empathetic to persons with disabilities mm -hmm. and afford them a job because yes. most persons with disabilities, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you for free, most persons with disabilities, even graduates, when they finish, they start NGOs mm -hmm. because nobody is employing them. Yes. So you start your NGO to advocate for persons with disabilities, to advocate, to advocate, and yet you are a graduate. People are not employing you. So they start NGOs which have no money at all, mm -hmm. because even those NGOs are not funded. Mm -hmm. I will tell you for free, I started before I joined parliament and when I was a lecturer at JKU at, mm -hmm. I started an organization, LibCAD, on my own to talk about issues of cancer, mm -hmm. talk about issues of disability, mm -hmm. and all the while, I was using my own resources. You've never when gotten I was any lecture. support? No, mm -hmm. no. Even the National Council, Gabo knows this. Mm -hmm. Gabo is aware, the executive. Mm -hmm. I wrote a proposal before I was a lecturer uh, for funding. I, I was not supported at all. <coughs> at Big one challenge. point, he told me to write a very mm -hmm. handsome proposal on cancer and all that. After mm -hmm. that, I never heard from, the, from him, even when I'm in parliament now. Yes. I will tell you for free. Mm -hmm. I've tried to write proposal, not tried, mm -hmm. I've written, mm -hmm. he has not responded. Instead, what you get is negative. So I want to say that okay. uh, all Still organizations same, eh? need to <coughs> deliberately yes. ensure they're employing persons with disabilities. Yes. And still on the same, uh, don't you think uh, perhaps uh, legislation would help if uh, at, at least uh, perhaps a bill is taken to parliament uh, that uh, talks about how people living with disabilities uh, should actually be more empowered because as you have said it's true uh, they always get the short end of the stick even in budget uh, the money that is uh, channeled towards uh, projects or uh, towards the people living with disabilities yes uh, ben what i'm saying uh, legislation needs to be uh, put in place yes. legislation needs to be passed mm -hmm. but you see there are some people in these offices who do not care about legislation they'll flout the legislation mm -hmm. like uh, the, the, the one on uh, article 54. Yes, there are yes, organizations yes. that do not have even one percent employed persons with disabilities mm -hmm. and yet it is so clear in the constitution mm -hmm that people with disabilities should be employed. So there are people who do not want to take responsibility. They look at disability as a burden. Mm -hmm. They look at disability as, you know, uh, you know a pity paradigm. And uh, what I want to say is that uh, as a society, we do not have to look at a disability. Let us look at the ability of someone. Because if you look at me and you look at the fact that uh, I do not have one leg or I'm, uh, you know, I'm not able to walk normally, then you will not know that I have the potential yes. to do anything. Yes. But let us not look at the disability. Mm -hmm. let, let us look at uh, the talent that people have and let us see how to nurture the talents. Mm -hmm. Like I'll give an example of what I saw in Lugari. In Lugari I saw that there were people with disabilities. Some of them had only one leg. If you can just show that clip. Mm -hmm. Some of them had one leg. Some of them, uh, you know, were, were using wheelchairs and all that. But they had the ability to, to, to sew. Yes. So if they had the ability to sew, why don't we nurture the talent that they have mm -hmm. for the purpose of our economy, yes. for the purpose of ensuring that no one is being left behind? And I'm happy that uh, when it comes to the mass, uh, the, you know, there's a proclamation that we don't have to import. Yes. If we have local labor, why not use the local labor? And even when we look at local, use local labor, mm -hmm. let us see how to deliberately ensure that we are building, out, uh, building up persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So that if there's some fines they're supposed to pay, mm -hmm. like the Lugari group, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's some fi uh, the, 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 if there's some fines they're supposed to pay, mm -hmm. like with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, wh when I spoke to them, they say that uh, they're supposed to pay seven thousand with the chamber to be members of Chamber of Commerce in order for them to be allowed to procure whatever they you know to to, to provide in order for them to to uh, to uh, to deliver whatever they, they, they are making. So instead of uh, you know them paying the 7,000, the Chamber of Commerce should just waive that. Mm -hmm. Then when it comes to cabs, mm -hmm. let cabs even come on the ground and see these people, they actually people with disabilities, mm -hmm. but what are they doing and what advice can we give them so that they can be productive? Mm -hmm. Let us see how to make people productive rather than we cripple them even more than they are crippled or rather than making them uh, you know more unproductive. There's need for us to ensure that we're lifting up persons yes. 
yes. with disabilities for the purpose of even ensuring that yes. our economy, yes. uh, you know, uh, goes up. Actually, when you talked about Article 54 of the Constitution, then we have where the problem is because it's not a matter of legislation, it's a matter of implementation. Implementation. Mm -hmm. Implementation and attitude. You know, there is need to do a massive, you know, disability awareness sensitization mm -hmm. in organizations yes. everywhere. In all organizations, so that uh, all organizations see that they, they need to bring persons with disabilities on board. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, uh, Ben, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know whether a survey has been conducted, but most persons with disabilities I've met, those who are on employment, they take their work with the seriousness it deserves. Mm -hmm. So they should be given a chance because sometimes they do even triple mm -hmm. the work that they're supposed to do simply because uh, they're committed to their cause. So uh, what I'm appealing, I'm appealing to organizations, I'm appealing to county executives to deliberately ensure <laughs> that uh, they're employing persons with disabilities, they're giving persons with disabilities a chance Mm -hmm. to be productive members of our society. Indeed, and uh, uh, perhaps a shifting focus on that, um, uh, the people living with disabilities are, are experiencing a lot of challenges, and especially now, uh, accessing uh, things like banks. In, in supermarkets, you know, the social distancing, mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, if somebody is blind, has to be directed where you know, he has to have a caregiver. And uh, institution, in, any services right now, uh, actually is um, a bit of a challenge because of also the, 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 the directives the government, the social distancing, and of course uh, other measures. What exactly should be done exactly by institution, whether it be supermarkets, whether it be um, uh, shops? Of course, the, 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 uh, the one thing that we've seen is that, uh, of course, in every shop, supermarket, uh, you have sanitizers and, and the hands, uh, but uh, what measures should be put, especially for disabled people at this moment? Now, uh, at this moment, mm -hmm. when it comes to ac accessing even uh, the washing stands, mm -hmm. You know, uh, there are some washing stands that are so high. So in all public places, uh, when uh, there are washing stands, they should be in a level where everyone can access. Mm -hmm. Because if they are too high, there are some persons with disabilities who crawl, which means they cannot even wash their hands if they are so high. Yes. And also sometimes if they are too low, there are some persons with disabilities who cannot bend too low. Like for me, I, 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 you know, I, I, look, very, I look like I can bend, mm -hmm. but I cannot even wear my shoes. Somebody has to help me wear my shoes, so I cannot bend that low. So <laughs> when it comes to this, this uh, the stands, the hand stands, then they should be in a level where they can be accessed. And also, uh, w when it comes to supermarkets and public places, um, let supermarkets, especially big, these big supermarkets, mm -hmm. let them be sensitive also to issues of disability, mm -hmm. so that they have someone in the supermarket who can address issues of disability, so that when someone with a disability comes mm -hmm. to the supermarket, the person is helped. Because most of the time you'll find that uh, persons with disabilities are just on their own. Mm -hmm. And I also talk about parking. Mm -hmm. You see, in most malls, yes. when you go to most uh, parking lots, you'll find that uh, uh, th th there are parking lots and you pay for them. Mm -hmm. So if a person with a disability has a car, mm -hmm. it, it means that he has to pay for a certain period of time. Yes. And he may not be as fast as the other people. Yes. So there's need to surely on humanitarian grounds, mm -hmm. even these supermarkets, mm -hmm. why can't they waive that fee, parking mm -hmm. fee? for persons with disabilities mm -hmm. because these persons with disabilities are bringing them income mm -hmm. and they have a disability they have <coughs> a challenge why don't they even waive that parking fee because in most malls you find that they, they they have to pay and another thing i've also observed even Nairobi hospital when i went there you know uh, last week mm -hmm. you'll find you also have uh, you know a disability i cannot walk as fast as other people mm -hmm. but when it comes to living you'll also pay the amount of money that people are paying for parking fees. So why don't these places, even Nairobi Hospital, mm -hmm. why don't these supermarkets mm -hmm. just wave for persons with disabilities? Mm -hmm. Because these are people who already have challenges, and when they're coming to you, they're not coming because they're happy. They're coming because they want to prolong their lives. So in order to help them, there's need to, during this particular time, to cushion yes. you know, persons with disabilities so that mm -hmm. they don't pay uh, these parking fees. And uh, I also want to say that uh, uh, th th there's need also uh, for county governments, even after you know the, the COVID, you know d d d 19 is over. There's need for county governments to ensure they have centers 
that address issues of disability. Mm -hmm. You know, in every county, they need to have uh, centers to address issues of disability, mm -hmm. and the centers should be all-inclusive centers so that they're able to address people with uh, physical needs, they're able to address uh, people uh, with uh, developmental issues, they're able to uh, address issues of uh, the, the, you know, the deaf, they're able to address people with visual impairment, because that is also what is lacking in counties. Mm -hmm. And then we need to also <coughs> have uh, people yes. employed permanently on permanent basis to actually do this. Yes. Uh, yes. And, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, sorry to cut you, but uh, on on the on theme, eh, you can touch perhaps on the empowerment. What they need. Earlier we had been uh, uh, on a short break, and you talked about uh, some of the people living with disabilities have um, have a challenge, uh, and especially accessing any 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 empowerment funds or any empowerment um, uh, any, anything that might change their lives. And especially you've seen here in town, yeah. some are beggars, yeah, some yes, are yes. selling, uh, mm -hmm. you talked about some mm -hmm. selling sweets and some yes, others. Yes, yes. yes, what exactly should be done right now? Because they really need is empowerment. You talked about looking at the ability, yes. not the disability. Yes, uh, they, they need to empower uh, persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember at one point when uh, I was a, at a student at Kenyatta University, mm -hmm. when I was doing special education, mm -hmm. I was attached at uh, current technical institute for the deaf. Mm -hmm. And you see that is a technical institute. Yes. And uh, the, the, the students there are trained in masonry. The students there are trained in uh, carpentry and uh, very lucrative training. But you'll find that when they exit, they don't exit to the market world. Mm -hmm. As in they end up, uh, they end up not getting jobs. Mm -hmm. And some of them end up, even with the skills they have, they end up selling sweets. Some of them have seen them also you are along uh, Moy Avenue, mm -hmm. uh, River Road, selling sweets. And they already sweets. have some courses with them. Yes, yeah. and yet they have papers. Yes. So they need to empower persons with disabilities. Where they have papers, empower them so that they have jobs. Mm -hmm. And where they don't have uh, papers and they have, uh, you know, DPOs, then the DPOs should be empowered. They should be given money to start businesses. Mm -hmm. Because people talk about empowering persons with disabilities, empowering persons with disabilities, but we need actionable empowerment mm -hmm. where the real deserving mm -hmm. organizations get the funds of course there are funds that go to in quotes there are funds that go to organizations of persons with disabilities but on the ground when you go there you find persons with disabilities complaining they've written proposals they've never received any funds mm -hmm. and i'm a witness i will not lie why should i lie mm -hmm. i'm representing the whole nation so i will say the truth mm -hmm. i have I, e I even mentioned before i went to parliament i had written proposal to the national council they looked at the proposal like this, they did not do anything. If I did that, how many Kenyans are writing and not getting a positive feedback? There are so many people, and money for persons with disabilities should go to the deserving mm -hmm. PWDs in this country because we cannot leave them behind. Indeed, indeed. And um, of course, uh, for the caregivers, some uh, people living with uh, disabilities don't even have caregivers, and uh, actually the, uh, the, the, the situation is compounded right now by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we uh, as a globe are experiencing. Now, uh, I want to talk about uh, issue of caregivers. Mm -hmm. Uh, caregivers have a difficult, difficult moment. Yes. They're psychologically affected. And especially now there's social distancing. Yes. Yes. Especially there, there, there is uh, social distancing mm -hmm. and uh, especially also some of them don't have the funds to buy food. You, you see, when it comes mm -hmm. to disability, there are so many needs. You'll find uh, persons uh, need food. Mm -hmm. Persons need, uh, 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 persons need clothing. Mm -hmm. uh, persons need medicine. Persons need the funds. Some of them even need pampers. They don't have the money for the pampers. You know, so there, are some, there are some caregivers who now end up getting psychologically affected. Mm -hmm. That you're supposed to give pampers to this person, you don't have the money for pampers. So there's need for the government to ensure that the caregivers are being given money in order for them to take care of, you know, the, the persons with disabilities. And I want to mention also uh, even something that happened even before COVID. Mm -hmm. In schools, in special schools, you'll, fi you'll find that uh, money was trickling in slowly. There are some schools and many special schools had not received the capitation money in good time. So you'll find that those who are working in, uh, in those schools during this time are also frustrated because uh, their sum had not been paid for about three months, mm -hmm. six months, 
And so during this COVID time, and they have not been paid, and money has not been released to special schools. Mm -hmm. It means the watchmen who are working there have not been paid up to now. The cooks who are uh, working there have not been paid, mm -hmm. and yet they rendered a service. Yes. There are also some suppliers who are, supp who are supplying in special needs schools mm -hmm. who are not paid. Mm -hmm. And during this COVID time, there is no money. So the government needs to ensure, the Ministry of Education needs to ensure mm -hmm. that it releases money, even during this COVID time, so that those suppliers are paid, mm -hmm. so that even those who are working there as watchmen, as caretakers, the shadow teachers mm -hmm. are actually paid. Because it's not an easy thing taking care of uh, children with disabilities in schools. So there's need to cushion uh, such uh, people because uh, the ministry has not said much mm -hmm. about issues of disability and what they're doing. So there's need for the ministry to come out and ensure that money is released to special schools even if there's dis distancing, mm -hmm. the head teachers have the contacts of the people, the co the, the, those who supplied food, those who supplied wood, those who did whatever, the cooks and all that, so that they are paid. Mm -hmm. And you see, when we do that, when schools reopen, you know, they, they, they'll, be, they'll have a heart to, to help uh, uh, these children. Mm -hmm. So they need to have a fair play mm -hmm. in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, we are doing something that is justifiable, something that is normal, non, uh, sorry, noble mm -hmm. for persons mm -hmm. uh, with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can see somebody had earlier sent a text message, of course, uh, asked whether uh, MPs uh, and uh, leaders are not being seen right now. Of course, there uh, is not more on uh, uh, people living with disabilities, but I believe that can be something that can really boost and help them. We haven't heard. We had the president and the, the executive uh, arm say that uh, they are going to at least sacrifice something. Uh, for the well-being of Kenyans. Of and of course, some of this is going to end up uh, with people who are living with disabilities. We, know, we haven't heard. Of course, it, it, it's, a, it's a blanket uh, common condemnation where people are talking about the MPs, uh, our legislators, our MCAs are not being seen. And some of them are uh, even putting their names on tanks uh, for washing hands, uh, putting uh, their names and their faces on sanitizer. And even some have the name on the... Uh, on the masks that are being uh, distributed. Kindly comment on that. I know it's not something that uh, is in the line of uh, people living with disabilities, but you are also a legislator. Now, uh, as a legislator, I want to say that um, I'll actually talk for myself. Yes, yes. That, yes. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, when it comes to issues of disability, yes. the issues I take from the bottom of my heart. And I even mentioned, I'm paying a loan that I took to, to do books when no one was even coming on board. I took a lot of, uh, is it around one point? Mm -hmm. Yes, to just develop the, the books. Yes. Because I know there's a gap that needs to, to, be, to filled. be filled. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that uh, when it comes to legislators, mm -hmm. uh, people are different and people are doing their own things, mm -hmm. activities to reach out mm -hmm. to, uh, to people on the ground. Like uh, the activity I did mm -hmm. in Lugari, it was my own initiative. Yeah, I do not have a kitty. As nominated legislators, we don't have kitties. So whatever you do on the ground, you are doing using your own your, your own monies. So I think the sacrifice that people uh, make uh, should be accepted. Mm -hmm. And also I want to say that uh, Kenyans should not be so quick mm -hmm. to condemn MPs. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen even in the newspapers, yes. even when I opened yesterday, mm -hmm. there are organizations that did activities and they say themselves, this, uh, this organization has done this and yes. that, yes. has distributed, and they write on the tongues. They yes. do this and that. So uh, it is unfortunate that... Uh, People find it, uh, you know, a juicy story. Yes. Just talking about MPs, yes. MPs, and all that. <laughs> sometimes, they <laughs> so, so, sometimes uh, they do not want to give credit yes. where it's due. Yes. Because yes. Uh, I, I want to believe even the uh, the books I wrote mm -hmm. using my own resources. I want to believe even the documentary I did yes. using my own resources to enlighten, to sensitize. I want to believe that even what I did in Lugari mm -hmm. using my own resources should be something that is commendable. Mm -hmm. So let us look at what people are doing that is commendable and commend them for their activities so that we can also encourage them to even uh, do more. Yeah. So uh, th th that is what I, I want to say. And even when it comes to giving, uh, <laughs> MPs gave. Like uh, their money that the Senate uh, gave, 200 uh, million. There is no donation that can be too little. Kenyans yes. should know okay. when it comes Indeed. to COVID. Yes. All donations are meaningful. Yes. And okay. whether it is monetary <laughs> or in kind. Yes. And it has helped a household. Uh -huh. 
we should count ourselves as having made a positive step. Impact. Of course, uh, we need to pick up the pace now because our time is uh, running out. Uh, we had talked about, uh, we had just touched about the insurance, and especially right yes. now. Mm -hmm. And uh, NHIF, I can tell you for a fact, we've had numerous court cases I work there, so I know. Uh, what exactly should be done? Because right now, it's not a matter of uh, something that will take uh, years to do. We really need the help that we should get right now. Now, uh, I want to talk about uh, NHIF and disability. Yes. Uh, when it comes to NHIF, not all persons with disabilities are covered. Mm -hmm. The uh, persons with disabilities who are on uh, permanent employment are covered. Mm -hmm. Persons with disabilities maybe who are on business are covered. But there are some persons with disabilities without an income who are actually not covered. Mm -hmm. And this is a very unfortunate uh, situation because, uh, you know, uh, we need to really ensure that uh, we are taking care of the health mm -hmm. of our people with disabilities, even those who are not working. Like, uh, for instance, when you're saying that all persons with disabilities need to be given, uh, you know, a, a, a stipend to the uh, end of the month, then persons with disabilities uh, need to also be covered fully. And this should go to county uh, governments, that uh, county executives need to devise a way of ensuring that uh, they get to know the number of persons with disabilities in their counties. Mm -hmm. After getting to know the number of persons with disabilities in their counties, mm -hmm. they need to get to know who are persons with disabilities working mm -hmm. and who are not working. So for those who are not working, then they should be covered by NHIF so that when they go to hospital, they are actually treated. Because there are some persons with disabilities who languish in pain, mm -hmm. they go to a hospital, they, they, you know, they have no cover, and so they cannot be treated. And even when it comes to NHIF, mm -hmm. There's need for an advisor, a PWD yes. advisor in H a NHIF, yes. who will advise on matters of disability. Yes. Because when it comes to matters of disability, mm -hmm. persons with disabilities uh, have greater issues. Yes. They need also assistive devices. These assistive devices mm -hmm. need, need to be covered also by NHIF. Yes. Like I can tell you for sure. When it comes to crutches, mm -hmm. they're expensive, but they are not given to mm -hmm. PWDs. Mm -hmm. When it comes to wheelchairs, yes. they're not given to uh, PWDs. When it comes to hearing aids, they're, they're not, not given, given to they're PWDs, covered, and yet yes. they're very expensive. Indeed. So there's need to ensure yes. that when it comes to health matters, mm -hmm. we also care about our persons with disabilities yes. so that we are actually counted as having really uh, been concerned on issues of disability. Okay. We need an actionable way of looking at persons with disabilities. Yes. We should go out of PR. Yes. No PR, no papers. Let us look at actionable ways of ensuring that yes. we are bringing in our PWDs yes. on board and uh, we are taking care of their health, we are taking care of their economic status, yes. we are also uh, not uh, leaving them behind. In 30 seconds, uh, unfortunately your time is up, in 30 seconds, uh, your final word. My final word. Yes. I want to say that uh, I have a word for persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. I have a word for persons with disabilities and their caretakers. Kindly ensure that you take in the presidential proclamation of the curfew. The president has been fair enough to say that there is curfew from seven in the from, from seven to uh, to five to seven a.m. to five in the morning. No, 7, 7 p.m. 7 to 5 a.m. From 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. Yes. in the morning. Can you ensure you abide by what the president has said? Because the president is looking for a way in which the country does not have a total lockdown. lockdown. Yes. And for caretakers, can you ensure that you're taking care of your persons with disabilities so that they are in the house within the curfew time? Mm -hmm. And also for our police forces, can you ensure also that you are also not brutalizing persons with disabilities, but you are helping them yes. in okay. case you come okay. across them? Thank you. And I want to say also, when it comes to fans of persons with disabilities, can they reach down to the deserving persons with the disabilities in this country. Indeed. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we have been uh, speaking uh, to nominated uh, Senator Gertrude uh, Musurube, who is also a member of the Education Committee and uh, also a person living with disabilities, on how the people living with disabilities uh, actually are coping uh, with the challenge that is the COVID-19. Uh, thank you so much indeed for watching. And now I'm giving uh, the baton to my colleague Timothy Kipnuso uh, with a version uh, of Tamrini. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Lucy Mwaura has been our sign language interpreter for this afternoon. Thank you.